Hello everybody, this is Dr. Adishina again. I'm here to answer one of the questions one of my viewers on YouTube was asking. The question goes by this, how did you study in medical school and what are the best techniques to approach studying in medical school? That's a great question. Well, the first thing I want to, you to remember as you're going into medical school is that it's a totally different mindset. It's a totally different way of studying. The techniques you use in college will never work in medical school because the volume of the information is astronomical. So one of the first thing I did was first to be open-minded, basically to be able to try different avenues of studying. First, I know this is going to require a lot of reading, but there's different forms of reading. There's active learning, there's passive learning, there's a kinesthetic way of learning, there's auditory way of learning. So I try to incorporate as many different forms of learning modality. The first thing I did was buy a whiteboard. Right? That might not seem intuitive to you, but if you have a whiteboard as a medical student or graduate student, what this forces you to do is write. All right, that is active writing. So if you're learning biochemistry and you can buy detachable whiteboards, that's actually just the white, plain white one you can uh, attach and reattach to, to your wall, walls at home. And you've got 10 pathways to memorize for the exam. You can either memorize them in your mind or you can write them on a whiteboard inside your apartment or your house and have this stuck on the walls. Now, over a course of time, as you wake up every day, you will look at that board and you will realize that your brain just automatically starts to pick up on the pathway and reinforces the concept. Because at the end of the day, it's all about repetition, right? The more you see it, the more you remember it. So you have to remember the glycolysis pathway, right? You drew your glycolysis pathway, the Krebs cycle, on a whiteboard, put it on the wall at home, and every time you wake up in the morning, you see it, you're like, oh, that's isostructed dihydrogenase. Now I know where that is, all right? That's alpha ketoglutarate. You will be able to see it over and over. So that really helped me tremendously, all right? I had this whiteboard. I also had a bunch of other sm uh, uh, smaller versions of detachable whiteboards. And anything I cannot remember, I just write it on the whiteboard so that even if I went to bed, I woke up the next day, I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 I remember that con concept right now. So that's one, the first thing I did. The second thing I did was try to figure out what is the best time for me to read, right? Some people can learn during the day. They are early risers. They'll go to the library and they will study either from eight o'clock to about four in the afternoon. And after that, they just kind of like go down. All right, they, they relax. Uh, for me, I was more like an evening study person. Like, you know, I'll go to class in the morning and in the evening, I'll kind of study to like two o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock at night because I was able to remember most of the concepts better, but that's what worked for me. You have to know what works for you. So that's another thing. Uh, also, I bought a lot of highlighters. So in medical school, you know, the content is just a lot. So I use highlighters and I always take a summary notes next to every PowerPoint slide. So basically translating in my own words. When I do that and I take detailed notes, by the time I read my notes the second time, I'm understanding the concept from my own point of view based on the content that's actually presented in front of me. That's another method I used. Another modality I used was flashcards, right? Now, flashcards are different. There's uh, flashcards already pre-made, like pharmacology flashcards that you can just read and shuffle through. I use one of those. But there are flashcards that you actually have to make yourself. Now, those are the most painful to make. I have to tell you, because let's say you're studying microbiology and you have to write each bug and what it causes and the, and, and the infections that's under it. When you actually handwrite this a flashcard, you can use them from any, any course. The downside to it, it takes a long time to make a flashcard. So if you're running out of time, probably not a good idea. But at the beginning, if you know the course is gonna be a lot of road memorization, you're probably better with flashcards. So I made a stack of them. I just went to Walmart, bought a, a bunch of them. And I'll summarize all of these notes inside a flashcard with a question and answer at the back. And I just go through them over and over, like, you know, in the evening, so that, you know, if I don't remember what's in it, I flip the card again, I'm like, oh, I just remembered it. Okay, that was another modality I used, especially for microbiology and some of the other classes that required a lot of memorization. Uh, the other thing I also implemented was try to understand 
uh, from an integrative perspective. So a lot of students are learning materials, but they don't want to understand exactly how everything fits together. So I, I think everything as a puzzle. So I looked at it like, okay, if I'm learning anatomy and the, you know, the professor is talking about subdural hematoma, um, you know, that's the clinical pathology that's associated with subdural hematoma with somebody that got hit inside of the head from a middle meningeal artery rupture, right? So I try to look at it globally like, oh, so this is why I'm, why am I learning this? All right, that's another key important thing. Everything you are learning has a why behind it. Ask the question, why this, why that? What is the mechanism of action? What is the pathophysiology? If you understand pathophysiology and physiology and anatomy of anything, you can basically deduce what's gonna happen when there's a pathology. And a lot of students, they don't focus on that. They don't realize that, you know, there's a reason why you're learning. It's like a building block and everything kind of builds on itself. So you don't want to get to the end of it and you want to like, oh my goodness, I wish I just understand how the heart really functions. Because now you're talking about cardiac arrhythmias and you cannot even relate to where the Purkinje fibers is inside the cardiac system. So very, very important. Everything kind of builds on its own. Uh, that's another modality that I used and that worked very, very efficiently. Another modality that I used was uh, study groups. Now, I have to warn you about study groups. There are pros and cons to study groups. Study groups can be great. If you guys come together and make a decision, we are going to go over, you know, chapter one and two of, you know, pathology. Uh, and you guys, uh, you know, make a timeline and everybody make the discussion. You bring your notes and you have already read before coming to the study groups. If you haven't read anything before coming to the study groups and you just kind of expect people to just start blurting things out, you understand, um, it's not advantageous, right? Because you're just wasting your time. You're better off staying at home or in the library to read that material and then come together with your friends and say, hey guys, let's talk about this topic. Uh, however, a lot of students, they come to study groups and they're not prepared and this is the problem. Uh, so I use that uh, modality and that tend to help a lot. Um, if I don't understand the concept, I'll call my friend up and also help explain it. Don't be arrogant. If you don't understand any material, you need help. Go for tutorials early before it's too late uh, so that people can that know the material can also teach you. Uh, another thing that also is very important to know is that uh, everything you've been taught is going to somewhat end up on your board exam, either the USMLE or on the complex exam if you're in osteopathic school. So you want to be paying attention as you're going along that, how is this relevant? Can this be a high yield material on the board exam? And as you're going along, you probably want to have your first aid for the USMLE uh, along with you because I use that a lot. Right, because I said, wait a minute, I have to take my boards in two years. I'm a first year medical student, but there's great mnemonics in these books that help me just memorize these materials better. Okay, another modality is mnemonics. Mnemonics are great, you can make them up or Google them. Right, feel free to use them. If they don't work for you, don't waste your time. If they work for you, use them appropriately and they will help you tremendously. So I use a lot of mnemonics. Also, stories. You can make up stories. All right? Medical school is a place that you can make up any story, no matter how dirty it is, all right? no matter how nonsensical it may seem. As long as it makes sense in your mind, it allows you to assimilate it, the content and relate it together so you can do well in these courses, please feel free to do so. Okay, So make up stories about any of these organisms you're learning and any of these pathologies so that you can retain them at the back of your mind because the material is just a lot. Okay, it's voluminous, all right, and it's coming to you at the speed of light, okay? Also, if you have old questions, all right, from your predecessors, your second year class or your third year class, they've been through the road already. Don't reinvent the wheel, okay? Your job is to ride the wheel to the top and break it, all right? So a lot of students are like, oh, I'm just going to try to be as smart as I can. No, 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 not a great idea. Ask your, former, uh, your fellow uh, upper class man, hey, what notes did you use? What, what, what uh, uh, textbooks did you use? Uh, are there videos and are there audios? Are there old questions? All this will help you because then you don't have to work twice as hard as the work has been done. So if there's old questions and the professors end up recycling some of these questions, guess what? You just got to review those questions before you do the exam and basically you might be able to actually see how the questions are tested. All right. Um, the last but not the least is like anatomy. 
Uh, anatomy, I spend a lot of time in the lab. I just, you know, during dissection, I'm the guy that's up inside the cadavers, making sure I learn every nerve and every artery and every vein that we need to know for the exam. And I like to teach everybody else. And in the process of teaching people, I learn also the same way. So by the time I leave the lab, I've taught five people before I leave my anatomy lab and I already mastered the information. I don't have to come back and waste my time. And the fi finally, the only thing I would say is that if you are going to go to medical school classes or graduate school classes, make sure you're learning the best out of them. If you notice that you're just wasting time, end up not taking good adequate notes, you're better off not going, staying at home, only if it's not mandatory that you come to class or that you actually have the lectures being recorded and you can listen to it at home. This is a method that you have to actually try by error because if you skip class and you're doing poorly and that's not for you, some people don't come to class and they do very well it's really kind of up to you from class to class. All right. So these are basically my basic suggestions of how I studied in medical school and it really worked tremendously for me. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel and also visit us on smashusmle.com so you're able to watch a lot of high yield USMLE videos. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PA student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam? Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, I want you to check out my website below. I've listed all the list of exams, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse pr practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website, you're able to reach me directly and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you are super awesome and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you want to be a doctor, want to be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome. And do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Let's go.